Hello and welcome to the Emerald Art Radio. Um, I'm uh, one of your hosts, Alan Cox, and my co-host is Dave Ashworth. And uh, with a little bit of luck, he's on the other end of the line right now. Hello, Dave. Good evening, Alan. Evening, how are you? Good evening yeah. to everybody. Here we are again, Friday night. I tell you something, it goes really quickly, really, when you think about it. It, it does. Uh, it only seems a week since we were on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is around about that. Is it? That's right. Down, down uh, to the minute. <laughs> now, are you, now, are you sure it's not Monday, Dave? <laughs> well, <laughs> well it, was early, joke, it was earlier today. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, we, we, yes. we were talking about, uh, you know what it's like when you get up some days and you think it's the day before or the day after. Well, I was talking to some friends today and uh, I commented to them that uh, I, I noticed that you're opening the cafe on a Monday now. And he said, no. <laughs> and I said, well, it's open, isn't it? He said, yes, Dave, it's Friday today. <laughs> oh, dear. <sighs> I and was convinced sent, it was Monday all day. Yeah, is that is that why you sent me that text saying, "Are you ready for the show tonight?" <laughs> you you was reminding yourself. <laughs> I was just about back in gear, and I put the alarm clock on so I didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, if anybody uh, has looked at the um, listing for the title of uh, this evening's show, um, I've put the the word escape, and uh, I told. Uh, um, Dave um, what the theme was going to be and um, it, they come from spirit these titles come from spirit and last week we had leaving and this week we've got escape and what's just come to me Dave is it's about part of it is about escaping our own limitations um, escaping our um, our how can I put it um, the way that we see life uh, and the way that we get caught up in everyday life and to escape to a place where we can actually see um, where we're going what we're doing if that makes sense Dave yeah absolutely Um it's an interesting point, the kind of escaping life, if you like. Um, yesterday, I called to see some friends, um, um, close friends. I've known them many, many years. Uh, I've not seen them for two or three years, but when I was in Lanzarote, this uh, girl sent me a, um, a text, and she said, Dave, right now, I'm needing a miracle. My husband's just been... Um, diagnosed with cancer and she said I know you can do a few things and I'm nowhere near as light, as enlightened as you but anything you can do I could do with you pulling out a few steps a few stops yeah. so I um, I had a chance to call up yesterday when I was uh, up north and uh, just two days before the lad had come into me dream so I thought it's time now to you know just call up and see see what I can do so, um, and of course, it's all in the hands of the universe. But it's interesting when you connect with ordinary folks again, because yes. I tend I tend to live on a completely different plane most of the time. My consciousness is just somewhere else. It's not in that everyday world that you were speaking about a minute ago that uh, many people struggle to escape. Um, for me, it's quite easy in a certain respect because uh, I've spent many years expanding the consciousness. So on an everyday level, I live in the real world. You know, I function in the real world. I deal with ordinary everyday folks. I'm very grounded in the real world. But I can switch into that higher consciousness just at the drop of a hat. And of course, when people are talking to me or whatever, most of those people are our spiritual... Um, friends and associates yes. and so we're always working at that higher level but I do understand how difficult it is for some people to be able to escape the everyday reality 
And, you know, in the everyday reality, all kinds of things come along to knock us flat, stir up our emotions, and give us tough stuff to deal with. And if you can take yourself out of that a little bit from time to time, then you can get your consciousness into a place where you can flow through it just a little bit easier. You've still got to deal with the everyday situation, of course, whatever it may be. But if you can just get your, your consciousness onto that slightly higher plane, then it does make it easier to deal with some things like that. So I'll give you an example. Um, I was staying away from home last night, actually. And I was in this cozy little single bed there in a room. And um, I thought, oh, this is nice and cozy. It was a nice warm room. So I settled down, went to sleep quite easily. And uh, about five o'clock in the morning, I woke up after having some very intense dreams. But they were those dreams that are a bit more than dreams, if you know what I mean, Alan. Yeah, I do. And, uh, and so I kind of wake up and then I stay in that deep consciousness trying to understand the messages in the dream. And uh, my heart was quite disturbed. And, and I thought, oh, well, this is, this is very, very heavy energy coming out of the heart. There's obviously some old stuff here that needs to be released. And so um, I manifested some vibrations of some essences and I brought them into the aura, just breathed them in, and that started to calm things immediately. And then I felt this energy leaving the heart and, and being drawn out through the crown chakra. And, and I dozed off to sleep again. So that's, uh, that's an example of, um, of how you can use um, various tools just to get yourself into that calm place where you can move through something more difficult. So a classic way for people to do this is using uh, the bark flower remedies in particular, the rescue remedy. So you can escape part of the difficult situation by taking a rescue remedy. Those people who are more educated with the use of essences can use more specific essences targeted to the actual situation that you might be dealing with or targeted to the emotion that you might be dealing with. That makes a lot of sense, Dave. And I must, I must admit, I, uh, like yourself, I, I can uh, deal with what's going on um, uh, in this life occasionally just like what's happened to me this week as you know dave um i let my guard down uh allowed things that's going on um uh, around me in a sense uh to um take too much of a hold on me and uh that's why i asked you if you could uh, see what was going on for me uh and and that's the first time for a long time that I've actually felt like, uh, like that. And I think it was a reminder um, that, yeah, I am only human and there might be a lot of people there might disagree with that, whether I am or not. <laughs> but um, I, I, I think what happens is that um, it, it isn't about being um, blasé. But because you're linked in with your guides and linked in with spirit, I think sometimes um, we forget, uh, well, I, I, I did in this occasion, forget that uh, stresses and strains can um, overtake you and it happens subtly without, and it, and it kind of just comes up on you. Uh, and, and it took, as I told you, it took somebody else last Monday um, who I give healing to and say, "What's wrong with you, Alan? You know, yeah. you're not, yeah. you're, you're not, you're not your normal self." And he took this other person to wake me up and think, "Well, the, if she's noticed that, then there, there has to be something." Yeah, yeah, you know. So yeah. I suppose it, it it does happen from time to time, doesn't it? It does, you know. And this is a classic example, isn't it, of what we've been talking about so far? You've been working for a number of months on this difficult personal situation, family situation, trying to resolve it, trying to sort things out for people. Uh, and a little bit at a time, it, it drains you to a certain point. And then energetically, you, you um, develop a little bit of a weakness in the energy system. And, and the next thing, that little bit of a weakness uh, 
breaks down into a fairly major energetic problem. And, of course, as you, you were saying, you don't really notice it. It creeps up on you. You might just think you're a bit tired, but in actual fact, it's your energy system that is depleting. And, um, and, of course, then somebody pops up and says, Hey, up, Alan. What's wrong with you? You're not looking your normal self. That's right. And, then, and it brings <coughs> your attention to it. Now, that's exactly how God works. It's a classic example of how God works. God suddenly brings you the message through another person because you can't quite see it yourself because you're depleted. Yeah. And that's, that's always how it happens, always. When, when the God consciousness can see that you, haven't, you can't quite see what's going on, it will try and bring a message through another person. And, of course, then your awareness is drawn to it, and um, you can take some action. Actually, <clears throat> thinking about, uh, about it, just coming to my head, um, many years ago when uh, my stepson um, Lee was, I mean, he's 30, he's married and he's 32 now, and uh, I think it was when he was um, 18, and um, he got involved with this um, young lady who was about nine, ten years older than himself. And anyway, situation, it wasn't good. And, of course, he, as you can imagine, Anne was beside herself. And he was going up the M6 motorway, um, just past the Canuck turning, actually. And this white van, absolutely filthy, with this name... Um, um, scrawled in the back, um, Nadine, and that's the name of this girl that um, Lee had got himself, uh, shall we say, besotted. He was besotted with her. Let's put it that yeah. way, <laughs> right? Yeah. And and says, look at that. And it took us about three days to work it out. What yeah. happens to a dirty van? It gets washed. And what happens yeah. to the, the name Nadine? It goes. Yeah, anyway, yeah. this was this was in the January, and I was told by Spirit she'll be back. He'll be back in six months. Yeah. Um, anyway, June the thirtieth, <laughs> the yeah. last day of the six months. It was yeah. a Wednesday evening. Yeah. I was at at a um, house doing readings. And I always turned my phone off and I'd left it on. And I always remember it was quarter past eight. My phone rings and it's Anne. And she's saying, he's back. <laughs> and I said, well, I've got, I've got a, a, a client there, you know, so I'm looking really sorry. No, no, it's okay. So I said, what do you mean he's back? He says, he's just, he's just opened the door, looked at me, said, yeah. you were right, walked up the <laughs> stairs, and that was it. And spirit, they... Yeah, yeah, they were right. The very last day of the six months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because earlier that day, Anne had given me, you know, you know what Anne's like, and she was saying to me, "Well, you was wrong, weren't you? You said he'd be back in six months, and he was. He hasn't come back." Yeah, but but you see these messages. Yeah, uh, it's how we interpret them, That's and right, yeah. isn't it? You know, and and spirit does it when the time is right. It was obviously a lesson that he had to learn. It was a lesson that I suppose Anne and I had to learn as well, that yeah. um, you have to, what's the word, keep your counsel, hold, uh, bide your time, and then if it's meant, it happens. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and this uh, biding your time and holding your tongue is, uh, is all part of it, isn't it? And just sitting and waiting. I remember back in um, 2005 when... Um, when I had my healing practice and, and I was putting the key in the door that morning and, uh, and the guide said to me, time to close the door and walk away. It was in the September 2004, actually. And, and they said, big changes will come in January. So um, it was actually the next January. I didn't have to wait 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so it was actually the next January. But January came, you know, well, January's here in the first week came and went and the second week came and went and the third week came and went and I was getting a bit impatient because I was sitting at home by this time twiddling my thumbs you know they'd shut the healing practice down you know three months with yeah. the clients had all cancelled in two weeks <laughs> and, this, and, and that was the end of that 
And then I think it was on the 28th or the 29th, and I can't remember. I'll have to look it up one of these days in the diary. But the 28th or the 29th, uh, and I woke up this one morning, and I sat up in bed, and that's when the Emerald Heart light just smacked me right in the forehead and, and in the heart at the same time. And that was the start of, you know, six months uh, six months escaping the old life and moving into the new one. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, you know, th- this one word... Just like last week, saying leaving, yeah. and and what that led to us talking about to yeah. the word escape, yeah. and these one words can be very re- relevant in the fact that they open up um, what needs to be talked about, and yeah. you and you could say that the emerald art in a, in a way uh, is the way to escape the um, the false life to yeah. lead you to the true life, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, uh, of course, you were speaking, one of the first things you were speaking about, Alan, was um, escaping your limitations, do you recall, a few minutes ago? Yes. And, um, and um, of course, the Emerald Heart Light is all about uh, illuminating. All it does is illuminate. It's a light. It's like you come into a darkened room and you put the light on, and guess what? You can see a few things. So the uh, the Emerald Heart Light is all about illuminating the aspects within the consciousness that create the limitations in our life. So if you think that here we are on one level experiencing the human life, yeah, and yes. that's very important because we choose to experience this. But, of course, the teachings of all the great teachers uh, are, are all giving the same message, which is, okay, experience human life while you're here, but at the same time, start to learn how to gain enlightenment. So on the one level, we're these humans, and on the other level, as the great teachers, Jesus, the Buddha, and everybody else said, uh, what we're actually here for is also to gain enlightenment. So there's, there's a, a massive escape, if you like, between the normal human life and the enlightenment. But if you, if you start to break it down, so let's say on the one level we're humans with an unevolved consciousness, and at the other end of the scale we're God. And the only thing that stands between us becoming God yeah, as in terms of consciousness, yeah, yes. that higher consciousness embodied within a human being. The only thing that stands between us are the limitations between those two extremes. So on the one hand, um, people might come down into incarnate into a human life and just get on with the human experience because it's not their time to wake up and journey into the higher life at that particular time. And others will incarnate, will have an awakening at whatever age they have it, and then they will pursue the light. Uh, and it's almost like, well, you know, you don't have any choice. Once the awakening process starts within you, you can't do anything but pursue the light. That's right. And, and so, you know, all we're ever trying to do is escape from one level of consciousness and enter into the next higher level, higher vibrational level of consciousness. Well, well when you um, look at the world, uh, there are a few, um, use the word lightly, inverted commas, humans, who it is so obvious that they are at, um, as you've just said, the, the higher level. Um, yeah. And um, you've got, uh, like Sai Baba, who passed away a couple of years ago. Um, there's um, there's also um, uh, Swami Vishnawanda, uh, who is, I think it's about 30 now. Uh, there's just two examples there of, of two people who have transcended, shall we say, what we would perhaps see as a normal uh, level of understanding that they've reach that higher uh, level. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, so um, escaping. You know, when that first, that word came up tonight, 
Um, well, it came up earlier in the week, but I was just bringing my attention to it before the show. I, and the two words I kept getting were The Great Escape. You might remember the film The Great Escape. Which yes. Was a, were very good and, and a successful film. Great bunch of characters in it. And I, I kept getting this vision of the, uh, of the Great Escape and the tunnel they were digging and that. And I was just relating that to, uh, to the, the Great Escape as we're speaking about it now is to leave one level of consciousness behind and really go through a transformation where you know you've absolutely gone through something. And, and it's interesting when that happens. I've had certain shifts in consciousness over the years which have been quite dramatic and others which are smaller. And the dramatic ones, of course, they really stick in your mind. What tends to happen with that kind of shift is that your vibration moves that fast that it really is a, a complete jolt to the system. It's almost like you, you need to learn how to inhabit the new vibrational state. So your physical body is still vibrating more or less as it was, but your whole consciousness and your subtle bodies, your aura, the chakras, have suddenly shifted into a new level, and the vibration within the physical body has, has got to catch that up. So it's like your energy system has, has escaped... <laughs> Yes. Your chakras have escaped. <laughs> They've kind of moved over to uh, into this higher vibration, and, and the rest has got to catch up. And what I find in that situation is that a lot of catching up does actually take place within the first two or three days. And then it's almost like you're wearing this new coat of higher vibration, and, and you blend into it kind of instantly. And it's like you've escaped. You've left that other yeah. part of your life behind. And, and very quickly, you, you're functioning at a new level. Well, that reminds me of going back <coughs> from when we first moved in where, where we live now, Dave. I mean, we've been here uh, 12 years. <coughs> and probably into about 12 months of being here. Um, I'm trying to remember back, but it kind of just happened where all my energy literally went um, I found it even difficult to get up out of the chair, to walk. Uh, it was almost uh, uh, my legs were aching and heavy, and all I wanted to do was sit down. Um, uh, I was like half asleep, half awake. And this went on for about a week. Mm. And then the one night I went to bed and I woke up, and it was almost like a different person had been put inside me. Um, all that kind of went. Now, at the time, I didn't understand it, but it's just talking now and, and, and you saying what you're saying. Obviously, that was one of, one of many um, uh, alterations um, yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah. So, so this theme this evening of escaping, <coughs> where do you want to escape to next? <laughs> um, I see. I see. Our, our, our esteemed, uh, our esteemed producer has put something about you should be escaping to America for a vacation. A vacation, that's right. And they were, say, they were saying we go escape in thirty seconds. Yeah, for the break. <laughs> to the break. <laughs> we've got to go. Oh yeah, we've got to hang out there, Dave. Yeah, we'll we'll be over. We'll be yeah. over. Uh, anyway, it's time for um, the break on the half hour. So uh, we'll be back after this break. Welcome back to Emerald Art Radio. I'm Alan Cox. Uh, if you want to know more about me, catch me at my website, which is calmingthoughts.com. And my co-host, Dave Ashworth, you can hear or read all about Dave at... It's up to you, Dave, now. Emeraldheartlight.co.uk, which is the... Sorry, it's emeraldheartlight.com, which is the blog, or emeraldheart.co.uk, which is the website. So um, if you want to join us on the blog sometime, there's plenty to read on there every week with lots of experiences being shared. The, um, 
articles by the elders. I've just I've just put up a piece yesterday, which is we we normally do uh, a guidance of the period round about this time. About every six weeks, I'm taken into the universe and shown the patterns that uh, the universe universe is unfolding at this moment in time. Uh, but we've got a very interesting period at this at the start of this year in as much as the uh, the wave, the unfolding wave of universal time is a little bit longer than it normally is at the moment. And we've got a period that's running almost from uh, winter solstice through to the spring equinox. And of course, we're not far off the equinox now. We're heading to it rather quickly. And, uh, and so guidance has given us a different kind of um, article this time. A little bit of feedback, a bit of talk about Christmas and what it means, a little bit about Lanzarote, a bit about my particular journey over these last few weeks as well. But it makes an interesting read and uh, a number of people have already commented on uh, how much they've enjoyed that. And of course, we um, at this period of time, when we have the guidance of the period, the, uh, the guidance also gives us an essence for this time, uh, for this period particular period and what the essence does is it uh, it acts as a little, a little bit like an accelerator on your vibration and uh, the essence is linked into what the guidance calls the wave of time or the speed at which the universe is moving forward so because the essence the vibration in the essence is linked to the universe the universe is pulling the essence along so when you take the essence, the universe pulls you along. So it's, it's a fantastic way that the guidance has given us over many, many years now, where when you take that essence, you, your vibration starts to shift. And, and um, as your vibration shifts, your clarity improves and you begin to see the opportunities that are facing you more easily than if your vibration was a little bit lower. So what we get in in this particular year, as uh, you might have heard on a couple of the other shows, is this is a year for expansion. And yes. Alan and I were uh, we were just talking before the show. Um, it's time Alan was writing his book, and uh, yes. I said to him that this is definitely going to be a year for writing. And since I came back from Lanzarote just just a week ago now. The amount of stuff I've written is absolutely phenomenal. Working with some of the elders from the Emerald Heart, you know, the stuff we're churning out, it's like we've got a backlog of stuff to put on the blog, but we can't put it all on at the same time, or it just overwhelms the blog and it overwhelms people. So for those people who are listening, uh, who, who want to think about this year of expansion, just think the word creativity all the time. And uh, and just last night, as I was, you know, in this little room on my own last night in the middle of nowhere, I just uh, I just produced a front cover for a new a new book. I thought I'm going to start this book now. I'll just produce a front cover. I'll put a title on it, and then it's been born. Now, whether I ever come back and put any more pages in it is another matter. <laughs> you will, but then. It is, you will. It is something that needs doing. It's a workbook to work with essences. We're going to put it on Lulu.com. And um, it, it's, uh, it, is, it is something that's very much needed by lots of people that work with our essences. So I'm going to try and put that together quite quickly. In fact, while I was in Lanzarote, uh, I sent uh, my mate Christian uh, from the Bracket Press. I sent him a brief and said, Chris, we need to produce this book. He sent an email back. Anytime you're ready, Dave. So I've already set the wheels in motion and it's just a question of, finding that bit of time to uh, to sit down and put it together and that's what we were speaking about just before the show Alan it's escaping yes. the everyday world and finding making that time absolutely making that time to do it and uh, I've been in Manchester with some uh, guys today who I work with occasionally at Benchmark Studios Kirk and Ryan and uh, we were speaking about that very same thing. Again, Kirk says, Dave, I, I've got to start my book. And so you're starting your book. Kirk's starting yes. his. And I started one last night. <laughs> so yes. you, can, you can see that 
when the guidance comes from the universe that this is going to be a year about writing, we're already into that vibe, even though some of us might not know that that's the message from the universe. Well, yeah, I spent a good two and a half hours uh, this afternoon, which might not sound uh, a lot, but after I'd done all my running around and everything this morning, and I said to Anne, I said, now, I said, nothing else, this is what I've got to do. And I came to the computer and I sat down and uh, I actually feel as if, I haven't actually started the writing, but putting everything ready in place, for it to happen whereas in the past i haven't done that uh it's yeah. almost like I've just expected it just to uh yeah. to be there so <clears throat> that's the escaping from how it used to be how i used to be um to how i'm thinking now and um the the the, the help that you've given me this week uh, has a lot to do, do with that as well, Dave. So I thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. We, you know, I think we've only done a tiny little bit, but already it's showing results. So as we were just saying in the break, in the next week or two, we'll get together and, um, and uh, you know, really push some light in there and uh, get things moving inside. That's right. <laughs> escape, <laughs> escape from the old Alan and into the new one. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Get your but, new energetic overcoats on. <laughs> yeah. You see, um, I think I've I've said this before, you know, but it, it's amazing that um, we think of the heart as um, it's always portrayed as red, and uh, but it's like the true energy um, being emerald, emerald heart, um, yeah. and if you think about it. Emerald, which is obviously a shade of green, and what are we surrounded with in most of this world? Um, yeah, green is green, green, isn't it? Green, green uh, is God's colour. I always yeah. say, yeah, yeah. It, it's the most um, prevalent uh, colour on this planet, yeah. and uh, it's um, and that expression to be grounded, um, and if and if you are grounded, you you gr- you're grounded. Within the green, <laughs> within the greenery. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, when I was a young lad, my favourite colour was green. All right, okay. Yeah. You, you know, we used to go into Manchester on the bus. Me and my mother. Uh, the Manchester buses in those days were either red or green, and I was always desperate to get on the green one. I never liked the red buses at all. And uh, if I was riding a green bus, I knew I was going somewhere. <laughs> But coming back to the writing bit, um, it's a very interesting thing. Sometimes I'll, f- I'll, I'll feel the, um, the guidance saying, it's time to write the guidance, Dave. It's time to write the guidance. And I'll be so busy and so wrapped up. And I, I'm kind of saying, well, give me a clue. Give me a clue. I'll make a note. And nothing comes through. Absolutely nothing. But the minute I actually sit down, switch everything off with the intent to start that writing. They switch it on immediately and it just flows. And it's usually for about an hour, between an hour to two hours. Uh, And I'm a touch typist, having been a typesetter in an earlier part of this life. So I can just sit there and channel it and type it as as well, which is uh, just a fantastic... Well, it's not really a gift, it's something I learned to do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, But... When you actually sit with that intent, Alan, I think that's when you'll find it'll start coming together for you. And you've started yes. making that space today. You've started reviewing things, looking at various softwares, you know, yeah. giving yourself some time to view, um, kind of put together an overall plan. And then um, I think you'll find that if you actually sit down and say, I'm ready, that's, that's, when, it'll, it, that's when it'll happen for you. <coughs> you see... I think a lot of times um, it's perhaps having confidence. So I'm talking about it in general terms with most most people, having the confidence uh, to do what it is you want to do um, and then actually uh, putting it into practice. And I think we have to call upon um, our uh, guides in spirit uh, and our inner consciousness um, to 
believe and accept, well, yes, of course you can do it. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing about the confidence is you can put the confidence on one side and all you have to do is trust. So many, many, many people have written spiritual books and, uh, you know, I come across the odd one or two here and there now and then and you pick it up and, and there's absolutely a message in it for you. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, and you look at these books and you think, well, why aren't these, why aren't these bestsellers? Well, it's because what the universe is doing, it's saying everybody has a lesson and a message to give who's on the spiritual path. What the universe wants people to do is to share their particular experiences. And, you know, if you can put them down in writing on a blog or something like that or publish them, you know, in an easy way with one of these self-publishing companies, um, that is going to go out into the world and it will help people at some level. There's no doubt about it. And what the universe does, I see it playing this game called Crossing Paths. So it's like God is trying to cross the path of the person needing the message with the person who's put the message out. Yeah. So it's trying to cross the path with that person's book that has been written. But if nobody writes the book of their experiences, then the world is a poorer place spiritually because there's people out there looking for answers. And if you haven't written your message, they're not going to find that answer. They might have to wait a little bit longer to find it. And I know from experience, you know, my first book went out in 2000, which is, well, 14 years ago, coming up now. And the amount of stories I heard of that book flying off bookshelves in shops and hitting people on the back of the head is unbelievable. And that's, you know, I've, I've even... Uh, <laughs> Some of the stories are so funny. There was a chap from New Zealand one day, and um, this woman had found a copy of one of my books at a jumble sale in New Zealand, the other end of the world. She brought it home, opened it, threw it out the window, saying, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Her husband went outside, picked it up, and it was just what he'd been waiting for. Yeah. <laughs> and so we had a bit of email correspondence. So you know, she had to bring it home for him. It wasn't the, the message in the book wasn't for her. It was for him. So, but the thing is, if the message was, if I hadn't made the effort, you know, and spirit was driving me to do it anyway, if I hadn't made the effort and written that book, you know, that guy wouldn't have got the answer he needed at that time. And many, many other people, hundreds and hundreds of people in those 14 years, uh, you know, have, have sent emails saying, well, Dave, that's great. Just what I needed to read right now. I think I've said this before, actually, that sometimes we, we either say something or write something or do something and we don't always understand the importance it is to someone. Mm. Yeah. Um, a lot of people it might not mean anything, but then there's just one person that it means a lot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I went on a bit of a journey today. I was looking for a particular crystal that I own. <laughs> and this crystal is eluding me at the moment. So I escaped from the Shropshire countryside uh, up to Manchester where I had to do a little bit of uh, business with the lads in Benchmark. Uh, you know, Benchmark Studio is a photographic studio. And um, it's it's run by Kirk and Ryan, these two lads. And... Uh, Kirk is a fantastic photographer. He does a lot of underwater stuff, you know, whales, sharks, amazing stuff. Uh, Ryan does uh, quite a bit of wildlife stuff. And, and I used to do, uh, I've not done much the last couple of years, but I used to do a lot of uh, nature photography. And um, the three of us used to get together and we'd, we'd have a, an exhibition. And funnily enough, I came across one of the files of photographs um, while I was in Lanzarote, it was on a little uh, USB stick, and it happened to be in the computer, and we're just looking back at the pictures from the exhibition we had about probably four or five years ago now, a big exhibition. And um, Kirk's a spiritual teacher as well, and talk about the universe crossing paths with people. I was in my car one day, driving 
up through this particular town. And uh, and in the traffic there, I, I was, and uh, I thought, oh, there's a little photographic studio there. I thought, do you know what? I need a, I, I really need an up-to-date photo for the website. So coming back down, I parked up and went in there, and this lad, Kirk, was in there, and we got chatting, and he says, what do you do? And I said, oh, <clears throat> I can't really tell you. I do a bit of mystic stuff, you know. And uh, he says, is it a bit like readings then, like, you know, medium shit? I said, well, it's not dissimilar, but it's not the same as. And we got talking, and, and you know, the, before I left there, he said, can I have a reading? <laughs> 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 and so, you know, from then on, we've we've been uh, mates ever since. And, and uh, you know, Kirk said today, I need to come down for a day for a day with you, Dave, and let's, you know, I need some shamanic stuff and some deep work doing, and let's get things moving. But in those few years... You know, I've seen Kirk open up fantastically and he runs his little spiritual groups. He does some shamanic teaching uh, and <coughs> he has, excuse me, <coughs> he has the most amazing gift with the nature spirit kingdom. You know, he'll go into the ocean and come out with the most amazing photographs and the boatmen say, so we have people that come here time and time again and they can't get shots like that. He said, you go in for five minutes and you come out with, you know, world beating photos. He just knows where to be, yes. when to be there, and and the and the and the fish just come to him. Or he's guided up. The he's mammals, guided. yeah. Oh, absolutely connected in. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this, if people are asking, um, <coughs> how do you find the emerald art? Well, it's with you, isn't it? It's just about um, looking at life differently. Um, searching out um, what is true to yourself um, and then um, li li linking in with your spirituality. Yeah, that's right. Well, the Emerald Heart works on many, many, many levels. You know, there's a kind of entry level into it and there's a very deep level as well. It is a, a proper traditional spiritual path. You can walk it for many, many years and it'll keep unfolding you. And the light is essentially a, a revealer of truth. So it helps you to find your truth. And your truth is about your mission in this lifetime. So, you know, you can, um, you can start working with it very simply. Um, working with the essences or taking the essence of the period. Many people uh, start off taking the essence of the period. You can learn to host gatherings and have the light seeded into your gathering, and that's a phenomenal experience. I, I liken it to a, a kind of pressure cooker, where and, and this is always fascinating for the first time anybody hosts um, an Emerald Heart gathering, because there they are, they've got maybe two or three friends round, come for a meditation, come and be in this Emerald Heart light, and they haven't got a clue what's going to happen, if anything. And of course, they all doubt anything's going to happen. But what actually happens is the Earth Mother brings up energy underneath the room where they are. The masculine, the Heavenly Father, he brings down the light. And the two of them apply the pressure <laughs> into a room. So it's like a pressure cooker. And, you know, even from the first time, people have never really done spiritual stuff before. They say, well, it's just phenomenal. And some of them find that uh, there's a third stream, actually, as well, which is called the wisdom stream. And the wisdom stream connects heart to heart. So it, um, the light comes through my heart and connects into the heart of the person who's doing the, uh, hosting the gathering. Or it goes through a teacher and, and, to, and to the heart of the person who's hosting the gathering. And you, you, usually, you usually find within two or three gatherings that the wisdom stream is opening that person's heart and the guidance is speaking through them. And I've seen it happen also the first time people have hosted gatherings. Yeah. So that's just one way you, you can start working with the light. Um, we're virtually... Uh, we've got two minutes left. Um, have we? Yeah. D uh, Where did that go? I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, went, it went somewhere. <laughs> I'm not sure where, but it went somewhere. Yeah. It, uh, well, coming up on the blog in the next week, we're going to be announcing the um, the um, 
the emergence of uh, a brand new healing system. Not only is it a brand new healing system, but it's a completely new paradigm in healing. And the healing system is called the Divine Plan. So it's the Emerald Heart Divine Plan Healing System. So people that are interested can have a look at that on the blog. The first teachings of this are going to be in Europe. Uh, last weekend in um, March is Amsterdam. First weekend in April is Switzerland. Second weekend is Frankfurt. Fourth weekend is London. So we'll be publishing these dates probably next week on the blog. So anyone interested in a brand new healing system, complete new paradigm, something totally different, then watch this space. That sounds quite intriguing and uh, rather exciting. Great. So uh, um, we'll be together again next Friday, Dave. And, God willing, uh, God willing. <laughs> yes, God willing, yes. Either on this earth plane or in spirit. If we've escaped. <laughs> if we've escaped. So, so it's, uh, it's time for you to uh, uh, say goodbye. So, yeah. Well, goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. And we'll see Bye. you next week. See you next week. Good night. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.